JSON Web Tokens or JWT is a very interesting concept which I want to talk about in this video, how you should use it, what it is exactly and why you should probably not use it in the way that you are using it right now, which is mainly I'm assuming an authentication. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel and hype the video if you're seeing that option. That helps me put out great content every single day. So JWT, which is technically JSON Web Tokens, where JSON itself has a full form again, which is JavaScript object notion, if I'm not wrong. So JavaScript object notion or notation web tokens, right? So that is the whole thing, the whole name. And what this technology basically is, it's nothing but a simple way of transmitting some information with the guarantee that it will not be tampered in between by any other person. And here is how it works. So in case of JWT, let's say you have some data like user ID as 123, right? Let's say you have this object. Now, of course you can, if you are creating this on server, you can pass this on client and your client can pass it sometime later back to server, but you don't know if you actually passed in user ID 123 or if client is saying that, no, hey, I got user ID 456. How do you verify if the client is saying the truth or not, right? So one way is that instead of passing the user ID 123 to the client, instead of doing something like this, you pass it a token, like, you know, just take the token as ABC, which is random token, right? And on the back end in your database, you maintain this mapping that ABC corresponds to this user ID 123. And then the client, when it passes you back ABC, you go back to your database and asks that, you know, what is exactly ABC and you get this object back. This is one way, but it involves you to make use of a state or involves you to make use of something as a database or a state machine, right? Something which is stateful, not state machine, but something which is stateful. JWT solves this problem. What it does is that it says that, okay, instead of you passing ABC, which is a random token, you can pass this user ID one, two, three itself, but with a catch, the first catch is that this thing actually becomes base64, the actual payload that you have. So it'll encode it in base64 and it'll also attach a verification signature, right? So this verification signature, which is here, it basically verifies that the payload has not been tampered with. This is what basically JWT is, that you get a string now, which is like a big string. You pass back this big string again. This verification signature cannot be tampered, right? If it tampers, you would be able to check on the back end that, hey, the signature is not the same. That means the data, which is there in the string in the first place is also bad. And that is how the core logic of JWT works. Now let's get to the part once we are clear on this. Let's get to the part on how you should be using this in the first place. Now, in my previous videos on, you know, how do you design like a backend, like a senior developer and APIs and rate limits and all of that, you would have seen that I mentioned this part where I'm talking about you having an API. Let's say you have a web application firewall, then you have let's say your actual backend and maybe let's say before WAF you have like a load balancer or something right inside your architecture. Now the thing is that technically speaking the database is somewhere here right so your database is over here and it's possible that you want to take decisions before you actually reach your backend right so in case of WAF for example if you're having rate limiting some sort of rate limiting for authorized users here you want to take a decision here itself if you want to proceed or if you want to not proceed you know and and if you want that information, you would probably want to avoid calling the database because you don't want in the worst case that your WAF actually makes so many calls to your database that your database just goes down, right? So in that case, what I suggest where JWT as a token beautifully sits into picture is that when you are authenticating users, let's say you are authenticating a user, let's say this is your login page where I'm entering my email and I have my password over here. Now most setups, what they do is once I enter this email and password, they will send this query to backend and then the backend will generate an auth token of some sorts, right? Now this auth token can either go as a response or it can go back as an HTTP only cookie. Now what this auth token in most cases is, it's a random token, it's a random piece of information, which is somewhere in the database as an entry table, right? The entry for here would be, let's say ABC as a random auth token. And then over here, a corresponding entry would be user ID one, let's say whatever, user ID two 
and so on and so forth. So this is the typical style of what auth tokens generally are, right? What you can do and what I am suggesting is that instead of generating this as a random token, as a random information that you're storing in DB, you should do this. This setup still remains the same, but make this ABC part over here, make this thing a JWT instead of like a random piece of token. Now, if you do that, what will happen is that it will be like a some sort of base 64 JWT encoded payload, something like this. Obviously, this is wrong, but to give you an idea, this is what the payload looks like. The second part is what the payload is, the original payload in base 64. So if I do something like, you know, base 64, and then let's say I'm passing in user ID as one, right? And let me just expand this. Yeah, anyway. So if I do something like this, where this is the header, right? This is a signature. I don't remember exactly the JWT signing format, but this is what they use as a header and a signature. And then the payload is in between. So over here, if you are using the user ID itself, what you can do is that you can still read these tokens on any of these layers, right? Be even before you reach backend. Why? Because of two things. First is that because of the way JWT works that we have talked about, this payload cannot be modified or this cannot be, you know, corrupted by the user because if it is then you would be able to detect it the JWT parsing will fail second is that every single layer like this load balancer this WAF or anywhere where you are actually you want to extract out some information you would be able to read JWT because it decrypting this or you know just decoding or verifying that this signature is actually valid does not require a database call it requires no call at all it's a purely CPU bound task which you can use you can compute the signature hash based on the algorithms used in the header and verify it with the signature there are are plenty of libraries for doing that and you would be able to do this exact same thing and you will be able to get access to the users over here right inside any specific layer that you're working at so here's how your auth system should work right in a typical scenario over here let me just scroll it down so let's say your backend gets the email id and password your backend says that okay let me generate the auth token for it the auth token actually is nothing but a jwt sign of small field right maybe just user ID or minimal data that you would need here and there, right? You don't want to stuff this a lot because again, it will increase the size of the, of the JWT. And also remember that this data that you're signing, it comes out as if like it's some encrypted garbage stuff, but that's just base 64 and that's plain text. It's available in plain text to anyone, right? So you only want to add stuff here, which is expected for anyone should be able to read that, right? So you create this auth token by signing it and then you store the auth token in your database as well. Now, the reason you need the auth token in the database is of course if you want to invalidate the session you want to log out people and whatever so you store the auth token let's say which is your JWT token and you store like you know is logged in as one like it could be any random entry because you anyway have the data inside it right you already have the user ID so no point in storing this again and you can have like auth token as a column so you have these two columns whenever the user actually sends the data like if the user sends token sent on every query right so the user sends this token to the backend at every query, the backend can just perform a simple lookup to verify if the user is actually logged in or not, right? So the backend can discard this being a JWT because backend anyway has to access the database and it can just perform a simple lookup. But wherever before backend or even after backend or even like in some sort of microservices like other services which requires like, you know, service one, service two, service three, which requires some sort of authenticated access directly from the client side, right? So the client is supposed to access some of your other services and you're not really interested in routing it through your backend, what you can do effectively is you can just make use of the same JWT tokens, right? So you can send this JWT, which is there. And all these services need to have is the signing key. And the reason you need signing keys because you obviously want to verify the integrity of JWT token, right? You don't want to just randomly just parse the base 64 payload, which is there. You want to actually check if the token is actually not tampered with at all in the first place. Remember that a lot of people actually just use JWT as a, you know, just as a way for people to log in and call it a day. That is actually a bad approach because you want to store this in the database somewhere, right? Because otherwise JWT is effectively impossible to revoke. It's just a stateless signed system, stateless signed protocol, which is there. And you can, you know, just if somebody gets access to that token, 
and they can just re-log in back in your system. So what you want is a final layer of authentication in the back end in the database, which maintains a record. But then of course, like, you know, if your JWD token is short lived and you are refreshing it continuously, then that's also fine. Finally, also make sure that when you are creating these JWD tokens, there is an expiry set on these tokens, no matter like how large it is, like maybe a day, maybe a week, maybe a month, but make sure that this expiry is set and don't create tokens, which are like indefinitely possible because the only way in that case to revoke the tokens is to either rotate the key, the signing key itself, which is obviously very painful if you are using it at multiple places, or you will have to like manually blacklist the token within the code base itself or using a database, which is again, like I'll say that's painful. Rest of the stuff is fine. You can just use any popular library with any of the runtimes and languages you're using. Most of them implement JWT properly. And obviously don't go ahead and implement JWT yourself. Just use the existing off the shelf libraries that are there and you'll be good to go. What you have to fundamentally remember is JWT is just about establishing trust. Don't use this for purely for authentication. Use, maintain like a auth token sort of thing in your database whenever you are, you know, doing some sort of authentication so that you can revoke it. But for any other use case where you want to just pass on the trust for the fact that, you know, something is not being corrupted in the process or something is not being malformed, just use JWT and you're good to go. A good example for this, like I mentioned, is that you should use user ID inside the token. Just create a user ID, not basically, don't say that the permission of the user is this. Until and unless you need this permission very, very deliberately inside this WAF layer or somewhere you want to access, this permission and the additional fields that are about for this user should come from the database if possible. Because again, you don't want to create multiple sources of truth, right? You don't want to see a condition where a JWD is saying that the permission is something, but the database is saying the permission is something else entirely, because then that is like a difficult state for your program to be in. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you learn something new, interesting in this one. That's all for this video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video very soon.